Hello fellow interlopers, and welcome to the ByteBeat tutorial. In this guide you will learn what No Man's Sky ByteBeat devices are, and how to build them. You'll also get to know their most important components in more detail. At the same time, I'll show you how to make a bassline, a drum pattern, and a melody, and how to combine these elements to make the music that you want. I'll also presume that not everyone knows music theory, so I'll try using simple language where possible and I hope that my efforts will help you make some nice music in No Man's Sky. Ok, so to start off, Bybeat devices are tools to create your own music in No Man's Sky. Think of them as simplified versions of digital audio workstations such as Fruity Loops or Reason. Now these devices have three key parts. The first one is the sequencer, which allows you to draw, arrange and group specific notes or sounds and it also enables you to create drum patterns. The second part is the synchronizer, which allows you to combine multiple Bybeat devices to arrange the melody the way you want. And finally, there is the advanced waveform which will allow you to actually create the specific sound that will be played by a specific ByteBeat device. To build a single ByteBeat device in normal mode, you'll first need to go to the Anomaly, find the Construction Research Station and select the Technology Module section. Second, you'll need to unlock the noise box which will allow you to get both the ByteBeat device and the ByteBeat cable. And now that you have these blueprints, you can build your awesome music machines by using metal platings, gold and antimatter. To do so, simply find a desired spot, open up the build menu and place the device. Of course, to make it work you'll have to connect it to a power source. And while you can build only one ByteB device, I recommend immediately building all 8 of them, as this will allow you to use No Man's Sky's music creating power to the fullest. You can build these devices by locking them one onto another, or you can build them separately. The devices will be automatically synced when locked together, but if you're building them away from one another, be sure to connect them via ByteB cables. Also, note that when built and connected to power, the devices will automatically start playing random sounds. If the noise they produce is bothering you, one way to get rid of it without having to power off the entire setup is to shut down the sound patterns in the synchronizer section. Now that we're done building, let's get to know Bybeat's key features a bit better. The first and the most packed one is the sequencer. Let me just set only this device to be playing so we can actually hear the music we'll be making. I also disable and clear every feature that I don't want playing right now. In theory, I could just press the stop button, but as you can hear, this will give us a continuous sound instead of stopping the music altogether. So instead, I'll turn off the power on all sections for now, and I'll also clear every section as I'd like to set everything manually later on. Ok, now that we have a bit of peace and quiet, the first thing you'll probably see here is the biggest section on the screen, the melody sequencer. This basically is a space where you can create or draw your own melody. If you know the notes you want to play, you'll want to select the right key or scale first. For example, if we select the C major key, this means that each row on the melody sequencer will represent one note on the C major scale in order. Now the song we'll be making in this tutorial will be in A minor, so we'll select this scale. With this done, the notes on the sequencer will be A, B, C, D, E, F and G, as these are the notes of the A minor scale in order. Now let's draw our first notes on the bottom of the melody sequencer. I would like to start with a simple bass pattern as a foundation of the melody I have in mind. As such, for now, I'll only draw two A notes on the bottom row. And keep in mind that you will not be able to draw chords on an individual sequencer as it can play only one note at a time. However, this can be bypassed as you'll see later in the video. Next, I'd like to set the play speed of our melody. We can do this by setting the tempo, as this basically represents the music speed. The lower the number, the slower the playback will be. For this melody, we'll set the tempo to 240, which means that the playback speed will be pretty fast. Also, remember that the tempo affects all sync devices. Next, to the right of the tempo and key selector, you can see the distance attenuation and volume settings. Distance attenuation is simply how far away you have to be from this specific ByteBeat device in order to hear its sound. The higher the percentage, the longer the hearing range of the device. Volume, as I'm sure you know, is how loud the sound will be. And as with the distance attenuation, the higher the percentage, the louder the sound. Ok, with the basic option set, you can change the note's length if you'd like. And one way of doing this is selecting the note duration, or steps, as you can see on the right hand side. It seems that these steps represent 16th, 8th and quarter notes respectively. In layman's terms, this means that by selecting 16, Bybeat will play the shortest note. Selecting 8, the note will be twice as long. 
Selecting 4, the note will be twice as long as the 8 note. In this case, I'll keep the bass at 4. Next, I'd like to make the sound more bassy. And we can do this by setting the pitch in the waveform editor section. The lower the pitch number, the more bassy or deeper the sound. On the other hand, if we set the pitch value higher, the sound will become higher or more squeaky. In this case, I'd like to set the pitch to 2. We also have some limited sound editing options in this section, where we can decide whether our sound will be more mellow or more distorted. Sine and triangle settings make the sound more mellowy, while sawtooth and square will make the sound more distorted. For our bass, let's leave it at sine. Next, I'd like to set the envelope of the bass, and this can be done in the envelope editor section. Envelope sets the fade-in and fade-out effects of all notes on this specific sequencer. For example, if we want notes immediately climb to their max volume and instantly drop to zero volume, we will mark the attack or fade-in value and the decay or fade-out value like so. If we'd like our fade-in and out effects to be gradual, we'll select a more gentle slope so the notes will sound like this. Also, notice that as playing, a note gets bigger and smaller. This is how the fade effects are marked visually. The note's volume is the highest when its size is the biggest on screen. You can also set whether the fade pattern will be applied across the whole note duration. Three quarters of the note's duration, one half or one quarter of a note. Ok, now to get back to our bass, I'd like its attack value to be short and the decay value to be long like this. Oh yes, there is also the option to reset the envelope on the next note, but honestly I wasn't able to make it work, so if anyone knows how to do this, please do tell. And finally, the little dice icon on the envelope editor is the randomize function and this will make by bit set the envelope settings for you. Now, as you've probably noticed, this is not the only randomize option. I'll show you how this option works on a different device, as I'd like the base we made to remain unchanged. So I'll first copy everything on this sequencer by using the copy function. Then I'll walk over to the closest by beat device and just paste it there. And voila! Now we can do whatever we want here without disturbing our previous arrangement. So back to the randomize function, we also have the option to randomize all elements. And this will randomize most sequencer features. However, have in mind that volume, distance attenuation, steps and pitch will remain the same. Everything else on the sequencer tab will be randomized. You can also randomize the melody sequencer, but note that the steps will not be affected and the note length will stay the same. There is also a randomize function for the rhythm sequencer, which will randomize the rhythm pattern but will not change its sound. And finally, you can also randomize all arpeggiator values if you want. Now as you've probably noticed, we haven't mentioned the last two sections in this video so far, so let's begin with describing the rhythm sequencer first. This is basically your drum kit and of course it enables you to draw your drum beat. Have in mind that its playback speed is four times faster than the sequencer play speed, meaning that during one complete sequencer loop, the drum pattern will loop four times. In terms of sound, the rhythm sequencer offers three types of drums, the hi-hat, the snare drum and the kick drum, in theory. I'm saying in theory because some of these sounds do not sound like you would expect. For example, you'd expect the kick drum to sound more like a bass drum. In reality, there's very little bass to the samples that you can use. Also, the snare and hi-hat samples can be very similar, to the point where it's difficult to distinguish one from another. However, that does not mean that using these is not fun. And for you to discover your drum options, No Man's Sky offers 13 different sounds for each drum type. It also lets you combine them together, so that Bybeat plays all three types at once. For the music we're making right now, I'll just select a very simple drum pattern here. And finally, the last sequencer section is the arpeggiator, which can be used to divide your notes into shorter sound bites and to arrange them into preset sequences that play automatically. Now the numbers on the arpeggiator, these represent the number of sounds that the shortest note can be divided into. To illustrate, let's set the note value to its shortest so that we get a 16th note. By selecting a number on the arpeggiator, we can see that the note divides into that exact number of sound bytes. One will leave the note unchanged, while two, three and four will divide the note into that many parts. Naturally, 
If we doubled the node duration, we also doubled the number of arpeggiator sounds to the maximum of 16, which of course is the number of sounds or notes drawn on the preset section. If we take a look at it, we'll see that there are four preset or pattern options where we can determine how this sequence will be played out. To describe the logic behind, I'll use our A minor scale. Let's suppose that the sequence plays the scale in order of full notes, meaning the first pattern, called up, would play A, B, C, D, E, F and G, and continue with an A and B an octave higher. Then it would reset and play A, B, C, D, E, F and G. Of course, how many sounds the sequence will play will depend on the note duration. So 16th note will play 4 sounds, 8th note 8 sounds, and 4th note will play all 16 sounds from the preset. Also, the notes playing will be highlighted, as you can see. The pattern down plays the sequence from higher to lower or deeper sounds, meaning it starts with an A, then goes to the lower octave and plays G, F, E, D, C, B after which it resets to C to play the sequence to B. Then we have a pattern up-down, that gradually rises halfway, then drops. And finally we have the opposite, down-up, where the sequence falls halfway, then rises. Next you can see two switches on the arpeggiator, one to the left and one to the right side of this section. The switch on the right determines whether the sequence will skip some notes or play them all in order. The bottom setting plays all the notes. The middle setting will leave every other note out. So if we take a look at the up pattern, the notes that will be played will be A, C, E, G and B. Then B, D, F and A. And then A, C, E, G again. And finally just B and D. The same logic goes for all patterns. The top setting plays every third note meaning that if up pattern is selected, the sequence will play A, D, G five times and then the final note will end in an A. The same logic, naturally, is applied to all patterns. And finally there is the left switch, which determines octave range. This basically means that this setting allows you to limit the note range that the sequence will play out. The top setting gives you the most range, where the sequence can play the full scale and even two notes an octave higher. The medium position will allow you to limit the range to 6 notes, meaning that if we take our A minor scale into account, the playable sounds are A, B, C, D, E and F. And finally, the bottom setting limits you to only 3 notes of a scale. Of course, you can mix and match all these settings so you get very interesting arpeggiator patterns. Now that we're done with the arpeggiator, we can move to the second byte beat tab, the synchronizer, which shows all synced byte beat devices. Each row represents an individual byte bit device, and the device you're currently using is always on top. Below it, you will be able to see how many devices are being synced. You can also notice minimized versions of sequencer loops from different byte bit devices here, which helps you distinguish between them, but have in mind that you cannot edit them here. To do so, you'll have to go back to the sequencer. What you can do, though, is effectively arrange your music by turning sequencer loops off and on however you want. And this, essentially, is how Bytebeat enables you to play chords, as you are able to set multiple sounds, notes and melodies to play at the same time. Let's say we want to play an A minor chord like on a piano, which is made up of three notes, A, C and E. We'll draw the A note on one Bytebeat device, then we'll draw the C note on the second device and on the same column, and we'll do the same with an E note on a third device. Then we'll simply turn them on on the synchronizer to play at the same time. Notice that I've turned them on across the whole length of the synchronizer. And when the yellow play line comes to the end, the melody will loop all over again. I'll turn them off now, but I'll also turn on our bass so that it plays from the beginning to the end of the synchronizer. And finally, to conclude with this section, while the sequencer represents loops on an individual byte bit device, the synchronizer represents the maximum loop duration of all synced byte bit devices. And that's it in regards to the synchronizer, as all other visible functions here are the same as on the sequencer, and we've already covered that. Finally, now we arrive to the advanced waveform function, where you are able to create the exact 
specific sound for a specific 5-bit device. The main components here are operators, numerical inputs and waveforms. Combined together, they make the unique sounds 5-bit devices produce. You can think of the operator as a bass sound which can be further modified by the numerical value and of course the waveform. However, this can be just the beginning, because if you try to randomize the first operator, you'll see that Bybeat will start to create multiple operators and their modifiers, which will further branch out and have complex relationships to the point where you're not really sure what's going on. This is why, when I try to create a specific sound, I go to the randomize function first, where I go through various sound variants until I get close to the one I want. Then I play with the numerical inputs, waveforms and even other operators to get the sound I'm finally satisfied with. Have in mind that when randomizing operators on lower branches, the operator and the branches below will be randomized, but the values above or from the side will not be affected. You can also randomize single numerical inputs as well. Waveforms cannot be randomized, but they can be selected manually. Of course, if you don't want randomized values, you can manually select any sound component. Have in mind that the advanced waveform section can be copied the same as the sequencer section. Now let's get back to our base. I'd like to get two operators and two numerical inputs. In theory, I could remove the extra notes, but in this case, this would not give me the pattern I want. So I'll randomize the first operator to get a simpler sound. Then I'll turn the waveform into a simpler operator with one numerical input. Then I'll select the operators I want and set the numerical inputs to 2. I'll also turn off the arpeggiator as we don't need it anymore. And I'll also set the waveform to sign again. Then I'll start with the melody. We'll first select a sharp attack and decay and set the envelope to the whole note. Then we'll set the pitch to 4. I'll also select the 8 note step. Then I'll draw an A note followed by E, D, E and G. I'll also set the waveform to sign. The next step is setting the advanced waveform and I'll select a simple one with the operator add and a numerical input of 1. I'd like to use this sound on all devices, so I'll copy and paste them to every single ByteBeat machine. All done, and now I'm going to turn on the first part of the melody. Then I'll copy its sequencer, paste it to the closest device, and create a big long E note in the end. I'll activate this loop multiple times in the synchronizer. And I'm guessing you know now which music I'm creating. Now I'll paste the sequencer to the next device and remove the final G note. I'll substitute this note with an A and octave higher. And to do that, I had to create only this note on a separate device as its pitch should be 5. Of course, I'll activate it on the synchronizer. Now I'll draw C, B and A. Then leave a spot blank, because we need a note with a lower pitch here. I'll draw a final A and set the pitch to 5. Notice that I'm always pasting the first sequencer, so I don't have to manually set everything on every device. I'll draw a G note with a pitch of 4 on a new device and activate it on the synchronizer. The final pattern will be very similar to the previous one, so I'm going to copy it and paste it on the last device. Here. I'll just change the final note to B. I'll then activate the lower G here as well. 
And this is it. We now have a nice X-Files theme loop that will play indefinitely on this planet. If you're interested in making the whole song, you'll have to create multiple loops like this one. Then you'll have to record and patch them together using audio and video editing tools to create a music video as unfortunately ByteBeat devices can only play short music loops in-game. With this in mind, if you'd like to hear how the whole X-Files theme sounds like in ByteBeat, click on the video to the left. And if you'd like to hear this video's whole intro melody, click on the video to the right. Of course, if you have any additional questions, and if this video has helped you create some nice beats in-game, don't hesitate and let me know in the comments below. See ya!